Hi, my name is Danielle. I'm the physiotherapist at Strength and Youth Therapy. Shoulder pain is a common injury we see at SNU Therapy, and it can also be attributed to a lot of problems with rotational movement of the shoulder. By measuring the mobility of each range of motion, we're able to pinpoint where the restrictions lie and work on those restrictions to enhance functional movement of the shoulder joint. People often have pain with overhead movements of the shoulder, especially in flexion and abduction, because this requires a rotational force and puts a lot of torque through the shoulder capsule. So what we see with the overhead shoulder press is the humeral head or top of the humerus is moving forward in the joint and butting against the front of the glenohumeral joint. This causes degeneration of the joint over time, especially with high loads or weights used, and also causes irritation of the long head biceps tendon, which runs right down the front of that joint. We also see his shoulder blade coming out away from his rib cage, and this means that muscles in the lower back that hold it down and increase your postural control are turning off and essentially the back is not being used appropriately. I'm going to do the half aptly scratch test to test the general tightness and mobility in Colin's shoulder. I'm going to do the half aptly scratch just to look at his internal rotation and adduction and see what compensation he's using and then I'm going to measure it and compare after I do joint mobilizations and a soft tissue release technique on his internal rotators. So Colin is going to bring his hand up behind his back like he's trying to scratch his opposite shoulder blade. So we can see a lot of winging of Colin's shoulder blade so it's coming very far away from the ribcage which means that these muscles aren't working to hold his shoulder blade down. So there's a loss of postural control there. We also see the humeral head coming forward in the joint. So that means it's budding against these anterior structures like the long head biceps tendon, which can eventually lead to a lot of irritation, tendonitis, and pain. So now I'm preventing compensations by preventing him from coming forward with the humeral head and holding the shoulder blade in place. So that's about under inch there. All right, so I'm gonna mark it. Okay, and you can relax your arm. So first I'm going to work with subscapularis, which is an internal rotator of the shoulder. So what I'm going to do is some passive release technique uh, to unglue some of that fascia and work out some of those muscle adhesions. Alright, so just relax your arm for me. Good. So I'm just coming down, finding areas of tightness, and then lengthening the tissue. So I would do that for about two minutes until I get increased length in the tissue, work out some of those muscle adhesions so the shoulder joint's moving a little bit more freely. So what I'm going to do now is a mobilization of Colin's shoulder joint uh, with movement. So I'm getting him into that end range of internal rotation here. What I'm going to do is a posterior glide of the humerus in the capsule. Because he's always rolled forward uh, into this hunched over position, this will help open him up and also increase that rotation through the shoulder joint. So I'm going to glide him back here using the belt and my foot to provide that posterior force. And then while doing that, I'm going to take him into end range internal rotation. And as I glide, bring him past that into his new range of internal rotation. And I'm just kind of gas pedaling the posterior glide there right past his end range. So increasing some of that movement in the posterior capsule of the shoulder as well. So normally I do that for about two to five minutes until we get a new end range of posterior capsule and also internal rotation. So now we're gonna retest Colin's half aptly scratch test. So I'm going to lock down the same way as before and get him to do the same movement. And then, okay, you can relax your arm. All right. So that's it. So as you can see, Collins gained some an increase in internal rotation of the shoulder. This means more mobility through the glenohumeral joint or shoulder joint. That means that he won't have problems with overhead functional movements like the shoulder press or any pain in the front of his shoulder from that impingement. So as you can see, it's important to analyze movement of the shoulder in all planes of motion. Uh, you can do the aptly scratch test at home yourself. If you see any of the things I pointed out today with Colin, come on in for a consultation. My name is Danielle. I'm the physiotherapist at Strength in You.